Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you are having a blessed and happy Sunday. I want to in include this in my group. Actually, um, on Sundays, I'm kind of like Chick-fil-A now. I'm not going to handle any business on, on Sunday. But, you know, I usually take this time to sit down and kind of reflect. Because one thing, if you get in your financials together, you definitely have to get your mind together. Because uh, the pure thought, most of our problem, what I've been pondering, is in our mind. You know, uh, really, your spending habit or whatever your reflection of what your financial situation looks like really dis took place with your mental thinking or how you're seeing things. For instance, um, if you have a lot, let's say of collections resulting from credit card debt. Okay. What caused me to get this credit card debt? What, what caused me not to be able to support this credit card debt? Was it really what I was buying and how I was buying that? Do I even remember what I bought? How did I get to this point where I could not pay this? But it was usually relates to a feeling at the time. I, I wanted to go out. I wanted to have this to make me feel better about this situation. So a lot of our spending is really emotional. Our spending can be cultural, you know, just culturally this is what we do hello hi, hi everybody thank you for tuning in this is what we do culturally you know so is the way i'm spending is it what i was generationally taught you know i was taught this or you know this is what my family do does you know this is their habits and so i come from the city of north and a lot of um, limitations just culturally. When we were there in the 80s and my parents moved out, it was a lot of friends that said, I can't come to see you because, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, they had that, uh, white people's going to get me. That was their thing. They, you know, fear limited them to go any further out of that area. You know, I don't know if it, that's really the culture now, now, but it was a fear to leave that area. So sometimes the way of thinking, the way we think will limit us on where we're going to go. And we can sometimes build habits that we're just automatically doing things and we don't even know why. Some people, um, I have did, did that just when I'm, sad or if i'm stressed i will not eat i'm happy i'll emotionally eat because i'm happy i'm not thinking about it i'm not cognate so i'm making a list i said i got it. i'm on the road every day i'm determined now i review my uh, checking account what am i spending my money on a lot of it is coffee a lot of it is just just certain habits. Why do I drink so much coffee? Because I feel tired. Should I now go to the gym? Is it what I'm eating? So you are what you eat. And then I'm spending money because I'm not preparing my food the way I do. I'm not, I'm so busy. I'm not uh, allocated my funds where I used to go food shop and pack my lunch. And then you can make better decisions and your financial situation is better. So really trying to get to the root of where where our spending habits is going. So I'm trying to be focused. I got all my daughter's pennies together. I promised her I'm going to flip this in today and buy silver. Because they're talking about they might cancel out the pennies. So I'm like, let me hurry up and get my money and in, invest it in something really quickly. And so I promised her I was going to do that. And we might go to the coin shop. And I teach her about that. That's my new habit because I want her to, to learn that. So it's to put a new idea to make sure my children see things a different way. And so sometimes our spending is culturally. 
is uh, what we've been taught. So we have to uproot those things because it's very hard, you know, to uproot that. My mother saved everything, male. I find myself, even though I didn't want to save everything, but because that's what I do, I'm so afraid to discard. I'll keep years and years of my, because it's like, I don't know, something might happen. There comes to a point where you need to shred some things, sort through it, and just things to gather. So sometimes, because even if you hate a thing or you dislike a thing that a parent did, or it's, sometimes you'll do it because you've just been around it. You know what I mean? So to really reflect, to get to the problem of how we allocate our funds, how we spend. Now, one thing I can say, my mother always shopped, uh, food shopping, and did that on the regular. So I have to get back to that. I, that's why I'm making my list today. But it lead me to the point where how I got credit information, I always reflect. I'll ask God, well, where is it or where am I going wrong in this area? And he always give me the answer, either through a dream, whatever. So because I dream a lot, I've always been a dreamer from a child, just dream. I'll write down my visions. So, and it'll either give me information for other people or whatever. So people around me that know me personally, if I call you about a dream, you know what time it is. I'll say, you know, this is what was said in the dream or whatever. You you got to move. You got to, I have many times that I don't know what's going on. You got to move. That person find out, you know why I had to move. So things work like that with me personally. So my thought was about, you know, really getting my finances in order, thinking about John the Baptist. That thing bothered me. I'm saying, now why? Even though he was a priest, his dad was a priest, that would have been a great income for him. Why did he go to the wilderness? Like, what, what was that about? And then you have the thing, how was he a voice crying in the wilderness? I don't, I don't get that. Um, from what they say, if a tree fall and it makes a sound and nobody hear it, did it really make a sound? So how was he in a wilderness and people heard him? I said, that, that makes me ponder. How is that possible? But then it came to me like, well, he was by water. And wherever there's water, there's life, even in the wilderness. So apparently word of mouth. And the weird part, it was he wore camel skin coat. It, it, the Bible is very direct on when it's saying, if it's saying something, camel hair coat. And if you really look at a cam camel persistence, don't need a lot of water, very valuable beast of burden at that time. And how he got that coat, it was saying at that time, the poor will, if a camel die, you have to get it really quickly to wear it. But if you look at a camel skin coat today, camel skin coat is very valuable. So he wore that. And then it struck me, he's in the wilderness and had a very strict diet. I watch Naked and Afraid. If you're in the wilderness, you eat whatever you get your hands on. Not him. Locusts. And wow, honey. So I had to study that out last night. I'm like, that's crazy. Wow, honey. Looked up. Oh, it was honey with the honeycomb. Re not refined. Because when they refine honey and take it out, it gets watered down. So he took that message raw. And that's what he was produced. If you understand in the biblical sense, a bee is unclean. It's an unclean animal, but honey is clean. And what it's saying is a bee represents stinging words, stinging situations. And there's a lot of us that have that. But what it produced is something valuable. So this is why I tell people, even though you're in a bad situation financially, you made some bad decisions. It's like those bees. You know, it might be what somebody told you, you're never going to be nothing. But it's going to produce something valuable. Take the instance, all of this knowledge I give you it's from bad experiences, <laughs> honestly. And I had to think, I said, oh, that's what you're trying to say. All my bad, stinging, being sued, being jacked up, experience, baby father not giving me child support, having to figure it out and just say, leave that alone. I'm not producing, getting no child support. I'm going to figure it out. Experience, that's what you get. Very valuable. But all it comes is from bad experience. That's why I tell people, don't concentrate on failing. It's not failing. It's learning. 
that's it. Did you, what did you take away from that? And that represents that B. That's that honey. Yeah, the experience is bad, but what it produced is something positive. Now you change your mindset. And he didn't take out the honeycomb. He ate it whole. And actually it's more holistic that way and more of a municipal purpose. And he was what he ate. But he had to diligently search that out. Diligently search that out. He didn't eat anything else. And that's why I tell everybody, don't eat from my mouth anybody else. Diligently search that out. If you want to go, it's just not about your, your credit score. Look at your goal. Diligently search that goal out. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Then when it said he ate locusts. And I said, God, wow, I had to study that eating locusts. Why locusts? And some rabbi said it was a clean food. Some say it's unclean, but it said they all agreed if it's a Levitical, if you were a Le Levite, it was a clean food. His daddy was a priest, so it was a clean food for him. And I said, God, why, why locusts? If anybody know, it's a plague. A locust is a plague. You know, Moses, Egypt, locusts. They're, they eat up their crops today in Africa. Locusts come up and eat their crops. God said clearly, because if you don't eat your that plague, that plague will eat you. If you don't eat that plague, that plague will eat you. Bottom line, when you're spending habit, if you don't stop that bad mindset, that consumer mindset, it's going to eat you. If you don't figure out why I'm just randomly spinning, that thing is going to consume you. A locust, a canker worm, ate up all your productivity, all your harvest. A lot of y'all making money. But because that thing is consuming you and you're not consuming it, taking control, it is wearing away at your life, your finances, your happiness, your family's happiness. So if you don't take control of that thing, it's going to take control of you. And that was just the interpretation. Basically, you better eat it, control it before it consume you. Eat up your finances, period. Because it all starts with a mindset, a bad habit. And a lot of times, that's why I always say, somebody got to ask the tough questions. A lot of people say your style is, you know, I have people, you, you can be too blunt. No, because somebody got to ask you the tough questions. God did this to, to Adam. Tough questions. When he fell, God knew where he was. And he started looking for him in the garden and he hid. And he said, Adam, where are you? He knew exactly where he was. And Adam said, I hid from you because I was naked. Adam been knew, knew he was naked. And God said, who told you that? He wanted him to understand. What Did you eat from that tree I told you not to? And what Adam do? He tried to dress himself with leaves, an apron. That means his behind was out. You still wasn't covered. Because he went from God consciousness to self-consciousness. So the same with y'all. There's people say... I feel like I ain't going to never get my stuff out. Who told you that? Where are you getting that thought from? Who's telling you that? Did your mama tell you that? Did somebody else tell you that? Where is that thought coming from? Because I was told I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I stay in my work. That's, that's, that's what I am. Like people say, where are you? You going on a plane? Oh, I... Yeah, I bought that while that ticket was low. Because mm -hmm. I got something I got to do. You going to put on a mask? What you going to put on for that coronavirus? Psalms 91. Thousand might fall by my right. Ten thousand. Uh, uh, a thousand by my left. Ten thousand by my right. But none of that come over here. That's what I put on. No, I don't receive fear. That's what I just don't do. I don't make stupid decisions. Like Jesus was like, I will say, though, if you be the son of God, jump off the cliff. Nah, off this mountain. Oh, no, not not to prove nothing to you, I won't. It's, it's written. You won't dash your foot. 
not to prove nothing to you, I won't. So I'm not going to jump off the cliff and run into a corona uh, virus colony that's quarantined. But I'm not going to let it stop me from my goals. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let my fear consume me. I'm not going to let that thought stop me what I want to do. Some people are afraid to fly. I'm not going to let that, a fear of death, it's more fear in living. You know, I'm, I'm good with my, my life. If I live here, as Paul said, he said, it's better for me to go home and be with the Lord, but it's more needful for me to be here with you. I'm not me. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. People think that's Dr. Luther King. That's Apostle Paul. That's him. They're like, I don't believe in the Bible. You like, I had a dream. Yeah, I like that. I fought the thought that you speak in word today, brother. That's, that's, the, I said that was, I had one dude. That was Apostle Paul. You like the Bible. Thank you. Because, see, you don't know what you like. You know, how can you judge something you ain't never read? And this is what I'm telling you guys. If you don't control that spending habit, you don't get to the root of what's causing that, it's going to consume you. As Proverbs said, it's the little foxes, foxes that spoil the vine. The little foxes that spoil the vine. And my mother had a garden every year. Took my seeds. I love squash, you know, uh, uh, acorn squash, put it. I was waiting for it. It's growing. And um, my mother <laughs> had this little groundhog, and it's crazy. She'll trap it, drop it in the park, and one on a pier every year. And it's a fence already around the house. It's a fence. I don't know how these things just come back every year. Like an assignment every year. I put my thing, she put another fence around her garden. I'm looking for it. It's growing. And I'm like, all right. And she's like, today, today, we can go pick your squad. We get out there, pick it up behind that squash. We was looking. That thing ate the back of it. Ruined my harvest, ruined my time, ruined my effort. And that's the same thing. If y'all don't control really the thought that's driving you to make financially not wise decisions, it's going to eat your harvest. I had to wait time. You, you can work your life to death. That's why pearls represent wisdom. Jesus said, don't throw your pearls to the swine because pearls represent time and it hardens and becomes something valuable. You're letting that canker worm, you letting whatever that thought life is eat up your finances and your time. It eats up your harvest. A lot of y'all getting harvest. A lot of y'all working hard. You really are putting in the work, but you said, why I can never see a harvest? Why I never see abundance? Because it could be a fox. This spoiling your vine. It could be an emotional somebody. You're a good saver, but your relative is always getting into trouble. And you're letting the enemy rob you through your emotions. You're always throwing your money there. Your children, always. Some people just need discipline. No, I'm not going to save you this time. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to waste my life. There's some people I know, very responsible, but they're trying to save the world. Why are you trying to say them? That person got to get to a position where they, I can help you. And I'll tell the person real quick, you not in a position I can help you. I'll just be throwing my money out the window, trying to help that person because they ain't ready to help themselves. When they get sick and tired of being sick and tired, they'll let you know, you'll know. But until then, till they get skin in the game, I'll tell a person real quick, oh, I need $200. I only got 50 for you. That's it. <laughs> uh-uh, because you got to put work in. I can't do it for you. You got to do it for you. I'm not going to do that. My mama told me something. Well, I will help this person. This person older. I'm not going. I, I will give this to them. I went. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I only help people when they ready to be helped. That's my style. I'm not, I've been there, done that. I'm not doing that. I'm not, because I, I understand I'm better off by stacking this paper and when you ready, then I can help you. Right now, I'm just aiding and abetting your bad behavior, and I don't do that. I'm just not going to do that. I'm just that person. Do people like that? No. 
But it is what it is. You're going to learn today. You're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn. Now, some people got to work, work, walk certain things out. So that's just what it is. And when people talk to me about their problems, I'll tell them, you want me to give you an answer you're comfortable with. I can't do that. The answer is the answer. You want to eat cake all day and not get fat. But unfortunately, that's not how life works. If you don't control this spin habit, you don't control this area of your life, ultimately, I don't care if I get your credit up to 800, 850, your habit's going to overtake you and you're going to be in a worse position when you start it. All of us go on crash diets, get down low, go back to that same old eating habit, you'll gain more weight. <laughs> when you start it because that's how the body work the body get comfortable they'll tell you with that high weight the higher you get your weight up the body want to be there the body wants to get back there it's comfortable there and that's us too with the way we spending the way we see things the way we manage our money the way we care about what people think about us if you're not careful if you got credit card debt you got to review that and say, how I get here? Not, I know I was spending and I shouldn't know, but what was the thought that caused you to spend? Go there. Go to the root. Because if we just deal with you putting out debt validation letters, and all, you'll clean that up and you'll be right back here. You'll be right back here. So please understand that. You, you'll be right back here. So you got to understand, you got to work on not the, sis, the symptom, you want to work on a real problem. High blood pressure is a symptom of maybe consuming too much salt, basically a dietary issue. Weight gain is a dietary issue, not that I need a weight loss pill. That's not it. You need to first reel in your eating habits. And then you could help by upping your activity. But it's a root problem. So is your finances. So is your credit. It's a root problem. Whatever. Your future is dictated by your 24 hours. If you can char charge your, change your 24 hours, you can change your future. A lot of people I tell them, oh, well, I can't start no business. Why not? Why not? I ain't got time. Oh, you got the time, whatever you dedicating your time to. You just ain't got the motivation yet. That's all it is. That's all it is. You got the time. You just don't have the motivation. God gave us all two things the same. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What you do with your time is your business. You got the time. But you prefer to put it over there. You prefer to watch Love and Hip Hop. You prefer to watch funny cat videos. As me and my brother... Just nonsense that's not helping your financial situation. It's actually feeding you a mindset that is a terrible one. If you're trying to get a relationship, last thing you need to do is watch drama a uh, uh, bad relationships. Because then your mind, are, hey, all these men are ain't no good. All these women are gold diggers. No, that is far from the truth. It's like 9 billion people on this planet. Just by pure numbers alone, everybody can't be all bad. And how can two walk together unless they agree? The problem is, hold on, let me, let me, let me settle down here. If that person is bad and you keep getting bad people, there's something bad in you. What you and a bad person got to talk about? You're going to attract what you are. You, I mean, let's be real. Let's tell, let's tell the truth, shame the devil. Let's not let Satan have us fooled. If all I attract is no good men, all I attract is no good women. Why? Some no good in you is a no good track man. Maybe you just want to be your emotionally needy. Maybe, why they always mean, maybe you got a lot of baggage. Maybe that is. Bag lady, you gon' miss your bus. That's what Erica tried to tell y'all. 
Some of y'all got too much baggage. And he did me. Don't nobody want to hear that. No, don't nobody want to hear that. Don't nobody want to hear that with me. I don't want to hear no man whine. I don't want to hear, oh, well, you know, this one keeps us down. Who keeping you down? You keeping you down? Your mindset keeping you, get money. Make money, don't make excuses. And excuses don't make money. I don't hear it here. I don't want to hear that. That's a victim mentality. That's a victim mindset. You Are you a victor or a victim? Like I tell them, oh, oh yeah, you. No, I'm pipping. I'm looking for Jordan. Bulls 96. I ain't Jordan over here. And you ain't going to be pipping. You going to take that last shot. Nah, nah, nah. You clutch player. Nah, nah. But pass me the ball. I got it. I got it now. But I ain't going to pull it. Because anything with two heads, that's a monster. And I know who I am in God. I'm a help mate. Help mate. <laughs> Not the help. All the doing. No, I ain't going to do it. Oh, you can help me get your game, my game up. No, you can help you get your game up. And we can come together and do something together. That's it. But no, but I ain't the one for it. I give you a piece of advice, but I, mm -mm, I can't do the what we gonna do. You want what we gonna do? I was gonna ask you the same thing. What you have? What you have planned? So there's just certain mindsets I don't tolerate. I'm in a certain age bracket, and if you coming to me, you ain't got no license. You ain't. I'm 40. What you been doing with 20 years of your life? Now when I was 20. We ain't had that much time in. But you ain't got your credit still bad. That's like 14 years. You could have turned it around. Reset. And God knows if you're 50. You just reset four times. Hold on now. You ain't going to fool. You can fool some people some of the time. But you ain't going to fool me none of the time. I'll be honest with you. Because I do the math. People. Why? I tell them straight up. Let me tell you something. This how that is. Nah, that ain't what it... Come back. How you know that? I did the math. One plus one equals two. I don't care how many times somebody... Five, 20, no. The math is... The math is... I'm out. I'm, I'm dipping. And they'll... You're just unreasonable. You're just... Then come back. You was right about that. And they'll say, I ain't tell you because I don't want to hear you say I told you so. If anybody know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a told you so type person. Didn't I tell you that? And the reason why, so next time you'll hear what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm going to let you know I told you that. Didn't I tell you that? And I'm going to say it over and over and over. I told you that. Yeah, I know I told you. Ten months ago. Yeah, I'm that type of person. Because this is the thing. If you can't stand that, I need to drive that home. Because you know why you can't stand that? Your pride. You got too much pride. I say I'm sorry with the quick fast. And I do it because so I can keep down my pride. I'll say, my bad. I'm sorry. I ain't, I ain't mean to do that. Because I know I can shoot up. My bad. I, I was wrong. And I purpose myself to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not for you, more or less you to break something in me because don't nobody like to do that. They don't want to say they wrong. That's why they credit messed up. They don't want to say, I got a problem. And then some people, I got a problem to be a victim. If I just, had, I just didn't have a mama, I just didn't have a daddy, I just didn't have a plan, I just didn't have this. Come on, now you got goo. Stop playing. I ain't have to tell you how to get a man, how to get a woman, how to get them. And a lot of them people, that's all they pursue is a relationship. That's it. That's it. I understand who called for me. We're going to have a conversation. I already know. At, at the offset of the conversation. Because Eve came out of Adam. I'm his rib. So he going to be talking like I'm talking. And we going to vibe. Right there. 
That's all. A lot of people just lined up because they never knew who they were. So if you don't know who you were, you don't know who you called to. That's it. I got to help support a man's vision. I asked him for the door. What's your vision? Oh, I want to do this, this, and that. That's a great vision. I'm not lined up to support that. I'll be honest with you. Not because it's not, but I can't support that. I'm not called to that. So I'm not called to you. I don't want to hold down your boat because that's not what I do. Some dudes just want to surf. And I saw a dude that bought a tree house in California and sell it out for surfing. I'm not, that's, I'm not called to that, to, to the surfing. So you got somebody out there with that same pa passion. And so y'all need to do that. Some people just got, you need to line up with your passion. But first you got to know who you are. I'm somebody's rib representing that I ain't the head. That's why they said God took him out the side, the one. She ain't supposed to lord over you and you ain't supposed to walk on her. Not That's why he ain't take her out your foot. But close to your heart, under your arm for protection. And it's a partnership. It's dominion together. But I'm not pulling you on and arguing with you. And then I see somebody, I had a dude say, we, we, I broke it off. Like, you know what? I care what people think about me. So I'll go buy every cookout. I said, what'd you say? What, what, what did you say? You care what other people think about you? I'm out. I'm gone. So that's what I want to leave y'all. Focus on your mind. Listen to some Les Brown, some motivation, and then start plotting out. You got to get your mind in order and just examine yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to first sometimes examine yourself. Let a man examine himself. That's what it say about taking Holy Communion. Let a man first examine himself. Um, Jesus said a man don't, didn't build a tower without first counting the cost. Or he would get to the halfway and can't build and people would mock them. Count the cost. Do a budget. Look at what you're spending. Count your costs so you can make it across the finish line. So I hope that's good for you guys. I hope y'all have a blessed day.